Chief Sawyer, would you uh, lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Good evening and welcome to the Hampton Board of Selectmen's meeting for November 19th. The first part is a public hearing for RSA 419A, Establishment of Fees for Public Hearing. Park and Rec's Department, Field Reservation Type 3 Users Fee. Mr. Chairman, may I inquire, is this, how many public hearings does this uh, require is one. it just tonight oh, okay good evening, good evening. Um, <laughs> just to specify what type 3 is it's a non Hampton based nonprofit organization and private individuals or businesses and organizations that want to rent use of our fields and uh, our tuck field building um, I believe the last time it was looked at was 2008 um, so I was asked to come up and see what new adjustments we could make for those uh, those fees. Right. And what is in front of you, I believe you have a copy of, are what I, is mm -hmm. what I came up with. Yeah. I looked around to a bunch of different communities that have similar facilities to see what they were charging. And the only really, I mean, some of them didn't change at all. The second one for sports seasonal use, I upped $10 from $15 to 25 and then tournament site use, we went up $50 from $200 to $250. Uh, camp and clinic site use also went from $200 to $250. And the biggest change really, honestly, was the use of the lights at Eaton Park, which we were charging $5 an hour, which is, um, it almost cost us that much just to turn them on the way they're set up. So we, I looked around, there were some places in the area that are charging $60 an hour. And I thought that was a little on the high side to make an adjustment, so I figured if I went in the middle around 30, it's kind of fair for everybody at the moment. Um, and if it's a problem, we can readdress that. But that went up to $30 an hour, and then Tuck Field to use the building. Um, we went from $40 for a half day up to $50 for a half day, and then $100 for a full day. So they're not huge jumps, they're just trying to get us back up. And we're not so high that we're out of the question. We're right in the ballpark, we're not, you know, trying to take them to town, literally, but no those are the adjustments that I, I found. Any questions from the audience? Because it is a public hearing. Yeah. Seeing none, I'll bring it back to the board. Mary Louise? I have no problem. Okay. I'm good with it. Jimbo, this is for outside people, not for... Yes, this is like if a business, in, even a business in town came. Um, there's type three is or I should say a type two is like Hampton Youth Association or a nonprofit in town. Um, this is literally like, there could be nonprofit, but it's private businesses also that wanna use our fields and stuff. So it's, it's not the Hampton Youth Association and or like Little Warriors football or something like that. This is okay. cool. outside cool. groups. Rick? Nope, thank you. Any other, any other questions? What do we need from here? Just a motion to approve and a vote. I'll make a motion that we approve the I'll second. adjustment. A motion and a second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Very Thank good. You. We'll have this hearing closed at <laughs> 7.04. Excellent. Next part is a public comment period. Is there anybody from the public that would like to speak? Mr. Preston, how are you tonight? <laughs> Uh, thank you. I was just reminded that we have a three-minute rule, Mr. Chairman. You got someone in the back here. Well, he's here to make sure you <laughs> here to it. I just want to make it brief on uh, winter parking at the beach. Um, day after the election, the state reported that the CPA lot, which is the lot that runs from M Street to the playground, I should say from M Street to the playground, the oceanfront lot, the state calls it the CPA. They're actually going to try to plow it with an odd and even system, which I've been trying for years to get done in different parts, and you know, so hopefully we're going to get to see this work. They said they were having signs made, oh. and they were going to consider ticketing and towing vehicles that didn't go, and you're going to park on the west side of the lot on the odd days, and you're going to park on the east side on the even days, 
so that the plow operator can go straight through and clean the clean the place up nice, which should be you know advantageous to everybody, residents, businesses. Yeah. That's a good thing, and hopefully we'll see how that works, and we might be able to institute it ourselves. As far as the lot goes in the front of the police station, I'm against any fees for people that park there in the winter time. I think it should be treated just like the center of Hampton or the end of High Street. I realize the town managers had some concern over lease spaces because you pay a lease. Mm -hmm. so with the stroke of a pen, I think you can take that lot and say if you park on the north side of that lot, uh, the shed that, that uh, the, the attendants go, that, that's free parking for anybody just like any other lot in town. If you have lease spaces, they can be on the, on the southern side. At some point, you know, we might want to give, give a little direction with the police or the plow operators to get people to work, to get the best job for everybody. I know we also have an issue down here on flooding. Because even when we have the ties over 10 foot, you know, sometimes you, they really have to watch them. Something to be considered if this town can get together with the precinct and work together. Because we see what the state's doing in the town and the precinct. We all get together and work on this. We can make it better for everybody. We can get people off the road. and. It just improve it all the way around. It's a win-win-win. An example of this was years ago, prior to the fire station being built, I spoke to Dick Violet. He was the clerk of the works on the sewer project. Yep. Okay, engineer, sharp guy. I asked him for the elevations from that parking lot in front of the police station to the state <coughs> park. The elevation, five feet difference. That's a that's a lot when you're talking about flooding. So maybe you know for the some of the flooding times, if we got together with the precinct which if you say from the precinct, the police station parking lot to the town, if you look at the clues lot, they're probably three feet higher. So that might be a better place for people to park on the real bad flooding tides. And if the, you know, the precinct, they should, they should work with us. And I really think that some of this stuff can be done with a stroke of a pen. I don't know where the origin of the lease, the lease tax for the lease spaces came about. I don't know if that came from the town or came from the state. But we could say, okay, that's on the left, and this is on the right, and we're going to treat it just like every place else in town. And I do see Richard's had that lot very busy with a lot of good training sessions going on down here. Mm -hmm. There's been some days there's been 30, 40, 50 cars in that lot. And uh, it works good. Anyway, thank you very much. I appreciate some consideration in this. Thank you. Thank you for the research, Charlie. Anybody else from the public would like to speak? Seeing none, bring it back to the board for announcements of community calendar. I have nothing exciting. Uh, just a reminder, in a couple of weeks, we have uh, the Christmas parade coming on Saturday, December 1st. So everyone's usually looking forward to that. I know I am. And that's all I have right now. Jim? Happy Thanksgiving to everybody this Thursday. Yep. 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 Happy Thanksgiving to everybody. Along with the uh, Christmas parade, we also have the tree lighting the night before, which is a great event. Thanks to uh, Renee and, and the Parks and Rec. Uh, that's a, a great event, and uh, hopefully everybody will enjoy that. They, uh, some of the restaurants in town have, have food out there. Yep. Uh, they have uh, some entertainment, and it's just a fun, fun night for everybody. While we're on this topic, I received a, a, a note here from Bob Preston Sr. <laughs> and Bob, uh, Bob gave us a check for $200. And he would like to see the railings out front painted. Oh, okay. The railing we were we were going to uh, those were go originally going to be replaced, but they weren't. He would like to see them painted. So I'd, I'd like to make a, a motion that we accept this check, turn it over to the town manager, and see that the railings get painted. So I'll make that motion. I'll second it. All those in favor? Unanimous. There you go, sir. All right, sir. That's nice of him to well, do. Bless it. his heart. I saw Bob last week, and he, he was chirping in my ear about it, so I said, well. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, he said, I'm going to send you a check. I said, all right, if you do, I'll, uh, I'll bring it up. So Let's make sure we get that done. Absolutely. Yep. As soon as the weather, yep. we, we can only so do it when it warms up. Yep. But. Yeah. So the next thing we have is the approval of the minutes for October 29th, non-public session. I will so move, Mr. Chairman. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. We have October 29th public session. I will so move. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. And then we have November 5th public session. I will so move. Second. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Okay. All right. Consent agenda. We have a cemetery deed. Two. Two cemetery deeds. I'll make the motion for the cemetery deed. 
I'll second. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. The appointments, first appointment we have, or the only appointment we have is Chief Sawyer with the Police Department. And I also see he brought the Colonel of the uh, ROTC in. That is correct. Back up. <laughs> well, I, do, I, I want to congratulate Chow. He did keep it under three minutes, and he mixed it up this time. And usually, it's either he's talking about the state watch or the town watch, and he actually mixed them today. Yeah, so. that was good. <laughs> so you keep it diversified, Chow. Right. So we are here to talk to you tonight about uh, an event that uh, I feel we're pretty honored to have over the last several years, and that's the uh, Reese Across America program. And the co coordinator here in Hampton is uh, Colonel Antonio from the ROTC program. So I'm going to have him explain what it is uh, and then seek approval to divert and detour around a couple of roads during the course of the event. Good evening. Uh, so Reese Cross America, we've done it the last two years. This will be our third year. I know it was done in the past um, down at the beach. Uh, this year, I'll have 10 TTUs going from northern Maine down to Arlington that they have enough wreaths again to basically put a wreath on every cemetery uh, stone, you know, ahead there on, on all the, the um, um, graves, so that, that's exceptional. Uh, we're the only stop in New Hampshire. Uh, so their first day of departure is Monday the 10th. They stop in Kittery. Uh, they'll stop here. Uh, this year, we're going to be inside, thank goodness. Uh, <laughs> so Principal Connor has graciously um, um, agreed to allow us to use the gym, the new okay. gymnasium. So it'll be in the gymnasium. There'll be 475 of his faculty and students there inside, hopefully a couple hundred uh, uh, citizens, uh, you know, um, Hampton citizens, and we're honoring five uh, veterans uh, this year. They've passed away over the last uh, 12 months, and they're all from the seacoast. So about 1 o'clock uh, on the 10th is when the convoy will arrive. Um, so there's 10 tractor trailers, 13 SUVs, there's a bus for Gold Star family members, so there's usually 30 to 40 Gold Star families that, that go along with the convoy all the way down. It takes a week for them to get down to Arlington. And uh, we'll have about an hour ceremony uh, in the gymnasium, and then it'll be done. So we need, I think, High Street from... So for the, yeah. uh, what we seek approval for is we're shortening the area where the tractor trailers are going to be because we're going we're changing the route. So they're going to come in uh, down Winnicunit Road, up Mill Road, and then we're going to double stack them um, on High Street from the area from Mill Road uh, to Academy F. We can fit all the trucks in there, and all this, the uh, other accompanying vehicles will be moved into a parking area at the Academy. Yeah. So we just really need approval to shut down that section of road on High Street for the duration of the event from Academy Ave back to Mill Road. Let's get a motion. I make a motion that we approve the shutting down of that section of the road. I'll second. second that. All those in favor? Unanimous. And I, I'd like to say, if, if you haven't seen it, go mm -hmm. go and see it. It's incredible. Yeah. View it. It is amazing. Yeah. You guys do an excellent job of it. Thanks. Okay. Anything else? I got to oh. stay. You can go. Oh, no, thanks, also, Chief. Uh, Appreciate it. <laughs> we want to have a proclamation. Yes, please. Yes, so, that would be great. Um, the computer. I'll, uh, motion, uh, I'll make a motion that we have a proclamation for them for the Reese Cross America. I'll second, Mr. Chairman. All right. All those yes. in favor? Unanimous. Okay. Thank Very you. Very good. Thank you. Have a great night. Thank you, sir. Report on the community meeting with the Molten Road. Mm. You know, I had heard from a couple of people that were there that you did an excellent job, by the way. Thank you. It's, um, it's one of those things when we, we these issues get raised in a community, and we've seen a lot of them come, and they're expressed here in this room. Um, a lot of frustrated people, and what can we do, what can we do? So I think sending them down to meet with us at the police department. Um, I think we have a pretty good handle on traffic issues in town, but every once in a while things start to pick up again in a certain area. And we have to find ways to identify the time, the place, and the people. And the best way for that truly is for citizen input on that. And uh, we spent two hours, when I told folks I wanted to cap the uh, meeting at two hours, they all thought I was crazy that uh, there's no way it would go two hours. Well, it went an hour and 45 minutes. So we came close uh, because there's a lot of people that have a lot to say. And uh, when I host these community meetings, one of the, one of the rules is, is we're going to be civil with each other. Everybody's going to be heard. We're not going to interrupt each other so we can get the full expression of the person's thoughts. Because one of the things is I haven't had one of these meetings in my tenure as chief that I haven't learned something that I didn't know. Um, the biggest surprise on this meeting was the perception from a majority of, <clears throat> excuse me, 
a majority of the folks uh, that attended, and there was approximately 30 people that came. And so that was, a, that was a big turnout for that road. Um, was that their perception is the speed issue is more the southbound traffic coming off a of high street towards Winnicunit, and I always believe that the issue would always be coming from the Winnicunit Road and, and heading that way. Mm -hmm. And their perception is, is contrary to what we thought. Um, and I'd have to say they're probably accurate on that. They're, they're there every day. They see what's going on. Um, so one of the things you know we can do in the short term, and what I, what I express to the folks there is I've heard a lot of different ideas about how we could calm the traffic situation on that road. But I tend to look to, towards things being the low-hanging fruit, the little things we can do to make it a little bit better. When we start talking about changing the configuration of a road, um, I just point to last year there was a Warren article uh, for Mace Road, for mm -hmm. sidewalks, yeah. that I thought was a very good idea. But it was a tough fiscal year, uh, and it, it, the uh, Warren article didn't pass. I think we're in a similar mode right now. So I said, let's try to focus on the little things we can do and worry about the big money, money items at another time if there is a big money item we want to do. I know there was an idea that the manager offered that we could make it cul-de-sacs on each end, to me, which me seems like a good idea. Um, it would certainly stop the problem, um, but it does create other issues for certain people in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. um, and that's gonna, that could cost some funds to, to make that happen. So. In the short term, one of the things we're going to do along with Public Works is we're going to take that speed sign we have there. Uh, that's if people weren't aware. We bought five of those signs uh, uh, last year, and we moved those around to different spots in town. What those are also capable of doing is uh, collecting data for us. So we did have a six-month sampling from January of this year to uh, about the middle of June that we could refer to, but that was on the northbound side. Uh -huh. So hearing these folks out, we're going to take that sign and attempt to get a pole put in before the, the frost gets too deep into the ground and try to get a good couple of months readings on the southbound flow. And I have no doubt that what the people are telling us is probably going to prove to be true. Um, one of the things I explained is, you know, I've been, I've been an officer for 30 years in three different communities, and these, these are not new issues. But generally speaking, when people come and say, you know, they're doing 50 all day long, in their mind, they're perceiving that. Um, and one of the things we always f kind of find out is when you do out the numbers with a measurement device that it's not quite as bad as the perception. The perception is real. It, it, it's a, and I don't mean to minimize it as a problem. It is definitely a problem. But what, how we address it really depends on the severity of the issue. Okay. So I try to explain when a police officer is out there doing speed enforcement, they don't just look at a vehicle and say it's going 45 and write a ticket. We can't do that. We have to have some means of measurement, some technology mm -hmm. like radar, mm -hmm. where the state police sometimes mm -hmm. use aircraft to measure speed in certain distances. So even for a, a trained police officer to sit there and look at a vehicle and say what speed it's going is very, very difficult. Mm -hmm. A lot of things um, affect our perception as humans as the speed, the size of the vehicle, and a lot of times the noise of the vehicle yeah. can be very deceiving as to how fast the vehicle is actually traveling. And these folks uh, were very accepting of, of, of what I was offering in that area. We went over some of the statistics, and, and you know, obviously, statistics do not always tell the whole story. But it's a jumping off point for us to try to address the problem. Um, so with that, we, uh, again, we, we talked for a couple of hours about a variety of different issues, possibilities. Um, one of the issues I think that we should try to do, uh, either if there's existing funds or maybe in the next year's budget, is to do a traffic study of that road, particularly the intersection. There's a lot of talk about um, the issue of the intersection of Morningside Road, mm -hmm. people cutting through and all that, that either some type of um, three-way intersection uh, that meets a legal muster, but I think in order to do that, we would have to do a traffic engineering study to, to make sure that was the right move because the only concern I have in that area, I think it works on the northbound section. I think it works at the Morningside Drive section. The only concern I have is coming off a of high street and the proximity of that intersection to high street. That was my number one concern, but I think it's yeah. worthy of uh, having a study done. <coughs> you see, that to me, if it meets the legal muster, is the cheapest way for us <coughs> to try to mitigate the problem they're having down there. So. 
Okay. That's uh, in a, kind of in a nutshell, and obviously we're going to have our enhanced enforcement out there. Uh, I provide each person with a business card that if, you know, over time as we start to fade away a little and move to, uh, to other things, if they see that problem resurrecting again, to reach out to me or the deputy, and we'll get an enforcement team out there again to try to, to curb the issue. Okay. Any questions for the chief? Jim? No. Rick? You know, it looks like you've given a lot of thought, and uh, I think it's appreciated. Well, I'll give credit to the, na the neighborhood. They came up with some good ideas, so I'll give good. credit where credit is due. Great. Excellent. So, Regina? No, thank you, Chief. Nothing, no, that's a good explanation. Okay. And, Mr. Chairman, I would just encourage anybody in town that's experiencing similar issues. I mean, we've had a few. Please just pick up the phone or reach us uh, by our emails. And if you'd like to have a similar type of meeting, we'd be happy to host a meeting. Uh, it doesn't have to be necessarily traffic. There's a lot of issues going on in town. Those, what we refer to as quality of life issues. They may not seem like big issues to everybody, but they're certainly a big issue if it's happening to you and your neighborhood. So yeah. please give us a call and let us know if there's some way we can help out, we will. Okay. But when the chief is all set, before he leaves, I have a couple of questions for him, if we could ask him to hold in for a minute. Sure. That's I, just all wanna, for. This I don't want to interfere with the, are we all set? On We're all set with his presentation. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, last Thursday, I got an email from you um, that was addressed to the board and um, town manager and, and assistant manager. And it had an attachment, and sometimes I'm not the best person with a computer. I tried the attachment, and I couldn't open it. So uh, I did eventually get help because I couldn't read it. Um, and your email said, uh, I have members of the board, I have communicated to the chairman of the Municipal Budget Committee my concerns regarding a conflict of interest that exists on the part of two Budget Committee members. The details of these concerns are contained in a memo to the chairman, which I have attached. And I, I did, and then Fred has given us a, a copy here. Um, I did stop by to talk with Fred this morning because I was a little concerned. And uh, I asked him if you, as, uh, as chief of the department, had consulted with him or with um, town council before you put the memo out. The memo is to the chairman of the budget committee, and it references two individuals um, who currently serve uh, as elected uh, members of the budget committee. Um, I can foresee potentially, uh, possibly, a lawsuit coming out of this, and I wondered if it might not have been um, more prudent to consult with Mr. Welch, because he said he, he did not. No, I, I did not you. consult with uh, Mr. Welch, and the information provided here mm -hmm. is all public information. So I'm well, it is now. No, it was, it was <laughs> it, when somebody is arrested, that is public information. The only thing I've offered here is information regarding the arrest of Mr. Lapham for DWI yeah. and also the arrest of uh, Mr. Warburton's daughter for a, an assault, which is public information. Any attempt to withhold that would be a violation of the law. That could get you a lawsuit. So if somebody is making noise about the lawsuit, by all means, all I did was provide information to the public and I think really the concern here ought to be why these folks didn't bring it up themselves. Why did it take me writing a letter to the chairman to bring a absolute conflict of interest to their attention? That shouldn't have taken me doing that. Okay. Well, I, well, I was rather concerned, and I, I'm not an expert. I don't read the newspapers with all of the mm -hmm. information and so forth. So this was, uh, this was Again, new. Again, I, I want to make sure we're clear. The information I've provided here, there is an, an ounce, there isn't a word of anything that's confidential that is all public information that, in my opinion, those two individuals should have brought to the attention of the Budget Committee before they started deliberating any budget I presented or take any vote. And, it, and okay. there could be legal consequences. If it continues, there is a potential that yeah. there's going to be something in the Superior Court and it won't be a lawsuit. Because I was uh, I was concerned about that because that hit me I didn't I wasn't aware at all of any any uh, thing that you mentioned in your memo. Could I say something? Yeah, sure. Um, I think what the chief did was he just put it in memo form for as an FYI to the board of selectmen and mm -hmm. to the chairman of the budget committee, like mm -hmm. he said, 
technically he didn't even have to do that. It was no public information. I did know about it even before I saw it in mm -hmm. the write-ups in the uh, union lead, uh, the Seacoast Online this weekend. So mm -hmm. I think that he was just sort of doing us a favor to make sure that we exactly had the information and what was going on. Well, so, I, I thank thought you, I Chief. Would, would have been a little more comfortable had it been run by town council and. I was fully confident that what I was doing was appropriate. Okay. It wasn't any issue that I have any concern about. Is any anybody can sue anybody for anything that we're oh, in a litigious I, society. It's whether whether the lawsuit can be sustained. Hmm. If something was sustained because I told the truth, then I guess we really have a bigger problem than the budget committee issues, don't we? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I just want to make sure because I was a little concerned once I actually mm -hmm. got to read the text. Um, that Fred was kind enough to, to provide us. Uh, would it be appropriate then, just because the folks at home aren't hearing this or know we're talking about a memo, that maybe it should be read? I think that's a good idea. I do too. Okay. okay. Uh, it's dated November 15th, 2018, to Timothy Jones, Chairman, Hampton right. Municipal that's Budget good. Committee. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, I would like to bring to your attention concerns I have regarding two members of the Municipal Budget Committee and their participation in the discussion of potential vote on the budgets that I oversee as Chief of Police. Committee members Brian Lapham and Brian Warburton have participated in the discussions regarding the four budgets that I presented to the committee on November 8, 2018. The four budgets I refer to are the Hampton Police Department budget, animal control budget, emergency management budget, and the parking lot enforcement budget. Mr. Lapham and Mr. Warburton have what I considered conflicts of interest and in my opinion should recuse themselves from any further participation in the process of these four budgets. On July 23rd, 2018, Mr. Lapham was arrested by an officer of the Hampton Police Department for aggravated driving while intoxicated. Mr. Lapham entered a guilty plea to the charge on November 13th, 2018. Mr. Lapham's sentence included a loss of license, fine, and time to be served at the Rockingham County Jail. On August 17th, 2018, Brian Warburton's daughter, Katie Warburton, was arrested for domestic violence assault by officer of the Hampton Police Department. The matter of State v. Katie Warburton has not been adjudicated at this time. Both of these arrests were brought to my attention by the Hampton Police Department Prosecutor Sergeant Reno due to the potential conflicts of interest. I determined as Chief of Police that conflicts of interest did exist due to Mr. Lapham being a member of the Budget Committee and Ms. Warburton's father, Brian Warburton, also being a member of the Budget Committee. Based upon the obvious conflict, conflict of interest in both cases, we requested the Rockingham County Attorney's Office to take over the prosecution of both of these cases. The Rockingham County Attorney's Office agreed to take jurisdiction of both cases and brought the Lapham case to a conclusion and continues to prosecute the ongoing Warburton case. I am astonished neither Mr. Lapham or Warburton has spoken of these issues at any time. This lack of transparency, transparency certainly could lead the public to question whether Mr. Lapham or Mr. Warburton are conducting themselves in an ethical manner as members of the Budget Committee. If you have any need of further discussion on these issues, please contact me at your earliest convenience. Best regards, Richard E. Sawyer, Chief of Police. All right. Any other questions? Thank you. Well, I'm glad, I mean, I'm glad I asked a question because I... No, I understand your concern, but I, I weighed those things. Uh, and I did not feel that it was necessary to... Um, consult with a manager or an attorney on that. They're just simply a statement of public facts. Okay. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next we have the town manager's report. Uh -huh. uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, okay. yeah. remind everyone that the winter parking ban is in effect for all cars on all streets in the town of Hampton from 1 a.m. to 7 a.m. each day from November 15, 2018 through March 15, 2019. Overnight parking in town parking lots is permitted during snow emergencies, but at no other time except for those who have winter parking permits that can be purchased through the finance department. Those with special flood permits for parking in town parking lots may park uh, when tides exceed 10.1 feet. I might also <laughs> add to that that there are situations where the tide can be above 11 feet and those parking lots may flood which could be a problem. So you have to be careful about when you park and pay attention to what the forecast is. Please do not plow snow across streets. Such activities are in violation of town ordinances and can cause traffic and accident problems. In cleaning, clearing snow from your property, please do not block the sidewalks. Construction on Tide Mill Road continues for the place, replacement of the sewer line and force main from Church Street 
Please follow uh, signs and drive carefully with workmen in the roadways. Every, everyone certainly have a happy Thanksgiving day. Mr. Chairman, I have a couple of other things. Okay. Um, with your permission and the board's permission, I would like to invite all of our newly elected state legislators and state senator to meet with the board before uh, Christmas time so that they can present to you what they feel should be done next year in the legislature, what they may be proposing, or have a, give you an opportunity to propose such changes as you would like to see uh, put forward to the legislature for next year. That's nice, that's, Fred. That's, that's a good, a good idea. idea. I also have uh, an announcement from the Public Works Department. Uh -oh. Due to Thanksgiving <laughs> holiday, the transfer station will be closed on Thursday, November 23rd, 2018. Trash and recycling routes normally picked up on Thursday will be picked up on Friday. Everybody have a happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> they would like to see things run well as well. Um, Are we doing the meeting schedule and such? I don't see it on the agenda. It's on it's the in there. It's on business. It's on page two. Page two. Um, page two. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, we had received a letter from oh, the is. Hampton School Department, uh, School District, SAU number 96, uh, number 90, excuse me, uh, requesting that the selectmen release $379,749.20 in school impact fees to offset the tax impact and the debt service paid by the, for the fiscal years 2017, 16, 17, and 17, 18. And I would propose that the selectmen, in fact, make up a motion to, in fact, release those funds. Uh, they, they did, uh, they did not, this was dated June 12th. We just received it. Um, they did put it into their uh, required forms for the Department of Revenue to, re to reduce the amount of money taxed to the people of town for this particular school district. I make a motion. How do we want to word that? Uh, just to release the 379-749-20 in school impact fees to SAU United. That's the motion I make. I'll uh, second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Quick comment. Four. I hope planning board members are watching. We're not talking about the planning board. We're talking about no, our agenda. No, but impact fees. Look at look at the revenue the right, school so district is getting. Else? Uh, just that I think you should take up later on a, a request that uh, to consider an item that was removed from uh, one of the condominium requirements for picking up their own trash ah, earlier yes. in the week. Um, Good. That's something the board should take a prerogative of, of investigating or doing something about at this point. Bring that up on the old business? Though. Certainly, sir. Okay. Yep. Excellent. Other than that, I have nothing. So. Anything for the town manager's report? I just have one question because Charlie came in and he was talking about the flooding down the beach. <sighs> and um, I was reading a memo that the town manager sent out to the building inspector on November 7th yeah. in regards to uh, a FEMA letter with the suggested violations hmm. from the federal government. But it sounds like you're not too sure that we need to uh, take any action right now in well, reading this. I intend to write a letter to FEMA, the, the district supervisor for enforcement of FEMA regulations. I have a problem when FEMA certifies that there are, I believe, six properties in town yep. that are in violation of the flood, federal flood control yep. regulations, and that determination was made with a drive-by. Yeah. And I don't, I, I, I'm sorry, but I, I don't see how you can measure the quantity of material as far as basements are concerned and, and, and how much... Uh, uh, flood release mechanisms have to be employed within the structures by driving by them. Uh, right. The there people are certain from FEMA are, are well, psychic. I, I know there's a Let's lot of people in town that are trying to get the town of Hampton because they have to be involved in getting these types of grants, correct? But we They can't. do, and, and we're looking for discounts on their flood control uh, bills, and the FEMA is saying no because of these drive-by inspections. And oh. My point is that they're telling us that we have to take an action as, as far as going to taking these people to court oh, and, nice. and charging them for violation of FEMA regulations when, in fact, they can't even produce evidence that there is a violation. Oh, and I they see. are the ones who have to produce that, that, that evidence, I believe, and mm -hmm. under their regulations. So I'm sending them a letter saying that they need to produce that information or the town's not, I'm not going to take an action because I have no basis upon Good. which to take the action. Thank you, Mr. Tom So we have government by drive-by? Apparently. <laughs> That's Why different. Not, right? Anything else on the town manager's report? Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you.
Good. Old business. And now we'll bring up the part on the, the ah. trash. So. Okay. Yes. Good. Because that is an issue at the planning board when people coming in saying, no, no, you can't do that. Absolutely. The uh, by the boy, and that's B O U Y, condominium in town, which is at 204 Ashworth Avenue, came in for a change to the condominium declarations and, and, and covenants. Yep. And um, on uh, May 7th, 1986, the planning board agreed and put into <coughs> their condominium documents a provision that said, uh, under the powers of the board of directors, that the directors for the benefit of the condominium and for the owners shall enforce the provisions thereof and shall acquire and shall pay for out of the, the common expense fund without limitation the following. Water, sewer, garbage collection, snow removal. The planning board removed the garbage collection from that requirement uh, and excused them, told them they could have town, town trash if they came to the selectmen. Um, We've been going through and conducting an audit of the, uh, the trash collection for condominiums and besides this particular one, there are 133 that we need to investigate yeah. who, are, who are also um, supposed to be collecting their own trash and are not. Right. So this is one of them. Uh, I believe the town should enforce the, re the requirement that's in the Registry of Deeds, was filed there and the condominium was approved based upon that filing. Right. And at this point, the planning board has approved that, or at least I conjecture they have from the, from the minutes of their meeting, which I've given all of you a copy of. Uh, I would suggest that the selectmen consider whether or not they should ask the planning board to reconsider that motion. Could, could we, Fred, could we provide the planning board with a list that you have there of the specific locations that have been advised or however. We that, took these from their records. Oh, so the planning board is already and, aware. And the town's records. Okay. So. Now, you did mention something when I read through that about that carts had been issued and that had complicated the problem. Can it, we remove it, the carts? It has, and we're proposing to remove those by April 1st of next year. Uh -huh. uh, in some cases, they've come in and picked the carts up. Uh, in at least one case, uh, the condominium, through an attorney, rewrote the entire condominium documents, and the town is now providing them with all kinds of services that were banned in the original documents without coming back to the planning board. Those you lawyers are tricky. Uh, they can be. You can't change the requirements that are imposed by the planning board without right. coming back to them for further consideration ah. and a public hearing. And uh, apparently that's not what's going on, so. So does Jason have that information? He does. He yeah. does, okay. He does. So what should we do at this point? Should we? I think you need to ask the planning board to reconsider their action. They have 30 days in which to do that. Other than that, the only course of action you have is to take them to the Superior Court because there is no appeal from their action unless they voluntarily take it. I'll make a motion that we ask the planning board to I'll reconsider. Second. We have discussion. Yep. Because I watched that meeting, and they were talking about parking at that condominium, up, and, and, and the trash came up, and they said they have no authority over the trash. They said they, it's not under their, they said there's a town ordinance that you can't have it. So They, they put it in the documents themselves, so. But who did? The planning board. Put in the document that what? The, the document that was done in 1986, they approved that going in. Right, right. But I thought we <clears throat> ourselves made the new ordinance that there was no trash for anybody over five units, that it didn't matter what was in the mm -hmm. documents, that we said over five units we weren't picking up trash and that we were the enforcing uh, body by that. Now, isn't that what our ordinance says? Act actually, it's over four units. It's okay, five or more. But isn't that yeah. what our ordinance says? That's what you said on the 21st of April this okay. year. So it doesn't matter what it says in the documents, does it? It does from a standpoint, if I were an attorney, I'd be happy to take you to court and say, the town has removed that restriction on our particular condominium. Yeah. That's, that's the issue. Okay. And we have that same issue in several other condominiums in town that are supposed to be being collected. Yes. And it, it, it adds confusion to the situation. There's a lot of confusion in the whole situation. But I think we ought to yeah. have the planning board in and discuss it. Good. Well, or, or somebody from this board go discuss it with Fred. Yeah, right. 
But with we, the can board. A, we can ask them in the meantime. We can ask them, yes. We can ask them in the meantime yes. to reconsider their Absolutely. Their but, I mean, it's a confusing thing, and I think we ought to get it straightened out immediately, totally, and not have all this confusion on what it's, what it's about. I, I agree with that. I agree, too, with what you're saying, but I thought I saw an email saying that they've already went to try to change the documents from the Registry of Deeds. So they, are they going to gone through Mark? Mark's here. No, Mark. Mark has been instructed to consider these documents and approve them in their changes, and this would violate the agreement between the planning board and the selectmen with regards to this matter. So, but has uh, it gone any further than that? No, it hasn't point? as of yet. But their their decision becomes final thirty days after it's voted. Right, so, but make a motion. We we have a motion to reconsider. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I'll second. So, or within uh, second. We have a motion and second. All those in favor, unanimous. But a quick question. Try to solve the problem. Now, where do we stand with our ability to retrieve the town's carts from these places? That shouldn't be a problem. They're actually town property. Okay. And we already have. Um, so we start. Have we started doing? We have that? already started to do that in some cases. Yes. Thank you. Good. Any other old business? I have one thing. Sure. I just wanted to do a quick water update. Um, uh -huh. Mindy Mesmer and I met yesterday, and she is she's still going strong, and she actually met Governor Sununu this morning, and they're going to uh, keep their communication open, and hopefully at the end of the month my commission will be issuing their final recommendations to Good. the governor and his staff to try to get this uh, water commission ongoing ongoing investigation the state of New Hampshire it needs to be ongoing there's always going to be emerging contaminants besides the PFCs so in my mind and in her mind it makes sense to have something that will be ongoing and legislatively <coughs> enacted and also which is really weird because what Fred just said about what the town manager just said about the legislators I received an email today from Aquarian and he actually forwarded me some information on New Hampshire Waterworks Association, which I haven't had time to look at yet. Mm. But um, he he said that Cowell is planning on actually inviting the delegation to speak with him because um, in order to continue collaboration with working from Hampton, Northampton, and Rye, interested stakeholders, state legislators, and NHDESs we all learn more about PFAS and how best to deal with the evolving issue. We will continue to communicate with all involved, share test data, and monitoring DES. So I find it nice that they also want to meet with the uh, legislators as well. So I don't know if there's any way possible that we could maybe collaborate so that we can all meet together. I mean, if you think about it, Aquarian is part of the town of Hampton. They yeah. do provide us water. So I thought that that might be a good idea and also I want to talk about the NHMA conference. I had a lot that I went to with the town manager and assistant town manager. Oh, I'm sorry, the uh, administrative assistant, Christina. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because a lot of people had been telling me how NHMA was lobbying against some of this water contamination uh, issues and some of these bills they were trying to present. But I can tell you right now, I have some information that I haven't gone through that I will share with the board at a later date. but they have it on their agenda and so I think if we can maybe work with NHMA as well maybe after Mindy Mesmer and I can get a little more organized we want to start getting them on board to uh, help us because you know they are a lobbyist for the municipality so I think that will be a good idea so I just wanted to inform that we were trying to all collaborate everything together and get the information out so that people know exactly what's going on so I hope it works <laughs> As long as we're talking water, I did uh, see the uh, update from Aquarian on the hydrant maintenance, and it showed that they have maintained 17 hydrants to date, and there are 479 left, and the weather outside isn't any too nice, and I thought Fred's book that he has that he referred to a while ago said that servicing the hydrants should take place in <clears throat> a little bit warmer weather. So I'm rather concerned, and God help us if we have the fire department access a hydrant that doesn't work because it wasn't serviced. 
So you wouldn't want to pull up to one of them. Is that, a, is that a question or is this a statement? Well, I'm I'm concerned. Okay. Seventeen out of four hundred and seventy-nine hydrants so serviced. Well, we could should probably have hydrants specifically on the agenda next time Aquarian comes in for there. Absolutely. Because I think they're supposed to be serviced in better weather. Has the fire department filed any complaints? I don't believe so. Talk to you at all about nope. problems with the fire hydrants? Nope. I think, we should, yet. I think we should get it from the chief. No, we're paying for those hydrants. The whole, all the taxpayers are paying for those hydrants. Okay. Anything else in old business? Nope. New, new business. 2016 town office holiday yeah. and selectmen's meeting schedules. I have something to uh, make a motion on about this. Okay. For the 2019 town offices holiday and selectmen meeting schedules. Okay. Um, I would like to make a motion that the Board of Selectmen meet every other week with the exception of budget season, which will be on an as-needed basis. So that is a motion. Do we have a second? Uh, I have a well, I'll comment. Well, and I'll and I want to have a discussion I'll after I get yep. a second. All right. You have a second. So. Okay. So... Mary Louise, I know that this is going to irritate you, so I'm going to explain my <laughs> madness for it. And realizing, you know, I was very new when I came on here, and I am in here quite a bit, probably an average three or four times a week, and I see how everything works. And I think that having a bi-monthly or every other week meeting, one, would give town management more time to work on an agenda. I know sometimes it feels like on a Monday, Monday I get like all this information and speaking with the town manager and Christina, it seems like the same thing happens to them. So maybe every other Monday might give a little people more time to get information together. You know, maybe we don't have an hour meeting, maybe we have a two hour meeting, maybe we have a two and a half hour meeting. But it gives, it's not just saying that I only want to meet twice a month. And also, I think the town of Hampton, along with a lot of things around here, need to think about succession planning. I know I'm very out of the ordinary where I can, you know, my schedule is pretty flexible right now. So meeting once a week is not, not that difficult for me, but if we're ever gonna decide that, you know, maybe everyone at this table doesn't wanna do this for the rest of their lives, I think that, you know, maybe we need to make it a little bit more easy for people to step up to the plate and do it so I think that this will benefit town management I think it will benefit the selectmen and I think it will benefit the town because we will just have more time to gather information process and get it on the agenda and actually maybe post the agenda before like the Friday you know the Friday before because you know you'll have two weeks instead of just the one so that is why I'm making the motion all right Louise. we should be posting it the Friday before anyway um, I'm, I'm opposed. Um, I have been a selectman for a while, going back to the old days. And I think, I, I object to the meetings uh, in summer uh, being sidetracked. We're here to work on behalf of this, of this community, and there are a lot of issues. Now right now, this is what, the 19th? of November. We have one more meeting next Monday, and then I think we have three in December. We haven't even touched the warrant articles yet, the special money articles. I'm not aware of any articles that are sitting there waiting for us to uh, work on. And well, the other thing that concerns me is when Fred and I were talking this morning, the way the Budget Committee schedule is set up, for the last half of January, that could run us into trouble. Fred, would you mind explaining what you explained to me this morning about the timing? Well, the Budget Committee has, um, they can, it's not, nothing unusual. Um, the last day on which you can hold a public hearing on the budget is January 15th this year, mm -hmm. uh, in accordance with the statute. But at that meeting, it could be uh, move to recess that meeting or the public hearing to a date certain and they have three dates on there right now they're, they're indicated as snow dates if they pick uh, the last date that's on there the selectman will have that, that comes on a Thursday 
Uh, the selectmen will have the following day to hold a public meeting mm. to sign the warrant so that we can post it on the following Monday to meet the statutory requirements. Otherwise, the town meeting will be illegal. So mm. we're, we're, we're looking at some tight constraints here in order to get things done. But we just have to work within the system to try to get all those things so they work together. But we also have no control over the budget committee right. and when they have their meetings. That's true. But what I do not want to do is I don't want to enter a situation where it's not possible for us right. to post the warrant in time for the statutory deadline. Otherwise, the town meeting is unlawful. And we've got to go through the whole process again mm -hmm. on the law. But again, we don't have any control over that. We don't. That somebody else has control over it. That's correct. That's correct. Yeah. We can communicate with the budget committee. And, and that's why we have Regina there to communicate. And right. ask, I'm, I'm sure she will communicate very nicely. I will, um, and, but I do request that if the ideal situation could be sent to me in email form so that I could communicate it totally properly because we do have a meeting next month. Tomorrow night we have a meeting. I'm sure so I could communicate it tomorrow. To you. And I want to clarify about my motion. During budget time, it, we would meet when, on as-needed basis. What are you suggesting? What, day, what time? What dates? Well, the budget season is... No, I'm talking about, uh, about the two, uh, skipping some of the meetings. Yeah, she, she, what she said was, with the exception of the budget season. It would be every other so week. So I would say from budget season is what? December? October? Oh, October, yeah. To, through... Through January. Through January. Through January. So we meet every January. week. Or, yeah. We would meet weekly, and then the other time would be bi -weekly. So like extension of summer schedule for the rest of the year. I, I think you run the risk of overloading some agendas when you're doing that. Okay. I'd like my time yep. to and that's I think that if we want to do something like this, we would be wise to just go for this next particular month that we have. It's a good month to take off. Uh, some time for several different reasons um, and um, you know like I see no reason why we sh probably shouldn't be off we should be off on December 23rd and so skip another like I would suggest why don't we try this on December 9th and December 23rd and see how it goes this, this is next year's schedule oh it, this, oh, this one is for next year oh that's well yeah. I would say In one day different yeah. Well, um, well so what are here. the dates? Yeah, it's fine. What's the date? Me. What's the date closest to Christmas this year? The twenty third. Twenty third is our. So. Yeah, these are these are this year. Yeah, you're yeah, on it. That that page, first page. So I would say December twenty third. It would be we'd probably be prudent to take that time off anyway, and then maybe the ninth and give people that will give people time of anyone that's out there wants to come and come forward with something they would have a chance to do that and I know from talking um, to uh, Fred and Jamie today that we have some important business on December 25th anyway so why don't we try those two dates and see how it works this month. Make it the 10th and the 24th please. The, is it that's, the 10th and the 24th? The 10th and the 24th. So you don't because it I says mean, 2018 here. Yeah, yeah but no, that's, that's not right. I'm looking at the calendar yeah, here. It says are you talking about 24. you wanted? Oh, all right. Uh, yeah, so we definitely they should just take, put the wrong. Uh, yeah, I guess they so, put the yeah. wrong date, right, right time no, on okay. here. Yeah, because it says 2018. Yeah, it's. Um, so incorrect. why don't we just do that? Those are two meetings, and we could try that this month and see how it works this month. You're already at the end of the month. You've only got one more meeting. December, he's talking I'm about. talking December. Okay. Well, December 10th November. and the 24th. We shouldn't be really coming in on the 24th anyway. But, right. gentlemen. Exactly. Christmas Eve. Hang on, I'd like to speak. May I? Yep. Okay. Yes, sir. <laughs> I'm neither for or against this, but I think it's a big change, and I'd rather think about it. I'm mm -hmm. not going to vote on it tonight. I would rather think on it good. a little bit before we before we do it and take a, a good look at it and see whether it would work or not. I, I, I'm... I'm right now more in favor than against, but I, I, I would not vote on it right away. But I don't mind Rick's idea either. I think Rick's idea is good. I mean, I think it's ridiculous. I don't think anybody's going to show up on the 24th anyway. Right. Yeah, so why don't we try those Although two we just show up on the 31st either. Yeah. I'll reframe my motion to test out the month of December. I think it's a good idea. Well, 
Great idea. Ladies and gentlemen, where are the special money articles? We need them for January. We're not going to do them Christmas Eve anyway. When are we going? I'm not talking about Christmas Eve. Well, we, we are have... talking about Christmas Eve with this motion right now. So. Oh, I'm talking about articles that we need on the warrant. And we need to have those worked you out here. I think everyone's going to forget about them but you? Well, it's I don't happen, know. So it, it's already relaxed. So we, we have the, one more so meeting So we have the 26th. Yeah, we, we're only going to We have the 3rd. We'll have the 17th by their schedule. So this and the 30th. No. Oh, no. I don't think. Well, it's the this, 31st. Oh, yeah, that's This right. is not okay. the. So yeah. it's the 31st. All right, so we still have So you still have. You're still going to have the 26th of November. You'll have the 3rd of December. You'll have the 17th. That's three meetings. And we're going to get all that done in three meetings. Sure. Sure. Well, I don't know because we I have no idea right now. And then we the also have, articles. when do we have to have the Warren idea. articles done by? Uh, the 10th of January, I believe. And we'll also have the 7th, so that's four meetings. And if there's any problem, we can call a special meeting if it becomes a problem. Nine, that's correct. But it's probably nine. not going to happen that way. That's but, right. If we need yeah. to have a special meeting, we can call them. The other thing I'm waiting for on special warrant articles is a confirmation of the dollar values that are in them. And I should have that probably tomorrow or the next day. So we should have the warrant. So we, we should be able to start this warrant. week. So we should be able to start special warrant articles next week? Yes, sir. Yeah, so, Mr. Chairman, why don't you bring that to a vote? All right. So we well, we have a motion to Jim the month to think of about December. It. We're only well, going to test out December. December out to December. take the, uh, it'll be the 10th, the 24th, and the 31st off. Is that what I'm getting? Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. Right. Motion for motion. that. Motion. I'll make it. Second. Second. All those in favor? Four. All those opposed? opposed? Four to one. So now let's get back to the other schedule of the, the town office uh, holidays. The holidays. I don't have a problem with that one. It's 11. Need that. Has it changed, Alfred? No, sir. No. Just the dates are changing because of the calendar change. Okay. Right. So I need yep. a motion to accept the, the town office schedule. I'll make the motion. I'll second. Second. Oh. All those in favor? Unanimous. And we will continue to discuss the selectmen's meeting schedule at, a, at, a, at another day. Okay, thank you. And just so that I'm clear on it, these 2019 meeting schedule that is here, all the ones that are 2018 actually mean 2019. I'm going to have that confirmed. Correct. Yeah. I want to make sure. If you look on the page on behind it, it does have the 2019 date. Oh. So, if you look on the other side. Okay. Yeah, I see. So that has the 2019. I don't know why we get the 2018 date put on that, but but uh, then the dates just oh okay yeah I got it so we will we will bring this up at another time. Question, so. Chairman, I have a quick question for the manager. Would you keep us advised as the uh, recite as the waste carts are picked up from these condominiums? I have to wait for them to be put back in inventory, but yes. Okay. Yeah. Appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. So that we can keep track of. Where we're going. Yes. Yes. We, we're anxious to do that. Thank too. you. So, number two, we have uh, stop signs for Birch Pine and Oak Streets. These streets, Mr. Chairman, intersect with the High mm -hmm. Street. Mm -hmm. And there have been a number of complaints with regards to people failing to stop as they enter High Street, which could yep. be a cause for an accident. So, so, and they are currently not posted with stop signs. So, we need a motion to post those. Motion I'll by second. Jim. Second. Yes. By Mary Louise, all those in favor? Unanimous. Good idea. While we're, we're talking on signs, we Sir. have Church Street. Uh, on Church Street, we all know Church Street's a one-way street. Uh -huh. However, when you're on the side streets, yeah. like Charles and stuff like that, when you come out to the end of the street, if you don't know that's a, a two-way oh. street, oh. so it should say no left turn or no right turn, wherever or one-way sign across the street. One-way sign, so we should also <coughs> look at putting those there so also. We'll Good. take a look at putting those up. Thank Can you, we sir. add that to the motion? I don't think we need a motion. I just no, because we'll just, we'll just take the care motion of it. with the stop signs as you need because we're actually changing it and actually okay. putting signs there. So this, this is street just is already enhancing the information. Correct. Yeah, yeah correct. this is already a one-way street. Okay. Right. And so the next one we have is the release of a security. Uh, Three seventy-seven Ocean Boulevard mm -hmm. for 
thirteen thousand one hundred and eleven dollars. Yep, that I'll came up that in motion. the planning board, and yeah. I'll second that motion. All yep. those in favor? Yep. Unanimous. Anything else? Any closing comments? Uh, Mr. Chairman, just one thing that I think, and Public Works is working on this, that you've heard about this before. They're looking at LED potential lighting for the town. Right. Mm -hmm. And they have re begun to receive information uh, that could, I have to see the confirmation of this in writing, it could <laughs> save us over a 10-year period as much as a million dollars in, in lighting costs. Well, so they're well. working diligently Thank to get this done. We're hoping this is all going to be in our hands within the following yeah. week so that you can, in fact, put a warrant article in to get it done. Excellent. And that should be better quality lighting, I would assume. It will be. And there's another warrant article. <clears throat> yep. That'd be 51. <laughs> All righty, so I'm going to need a motion to go into non-public under RSA 91A. Hyphen, cap A, colon 3, Roman 2, small e, litigation. I'll so move, Mr. Chairman. Motion. Second. All those in favor, aye. roll call. Aye. Aye, aye, aye. 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 A